Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. There is a lot more coal being mined this year than last year, so there's absolutely no reason for anyone to worry about a coal shortage this winter. The only problem is one of distribution, and that can be solved with your cooperation. Blue coal dealers right now are delivering anthracite as fast as they can. Some coal in every bin, enough for immediate needs, is the goal of your friendly blue coal dealer. Don't insist on a full winter supply at one time. Help your neighbors now by being patient, and you'll benefit in the long run. Remember, there's enough coal for everyone, but deliveries must be confined to immediate needs at present. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death Keeps a Deadline. Fear, awful, haunting fear, is the spur that drives many a criminal to horrible deeds. And it is such fear that drives the shadow's enemy to murder when death meets the deadline. It is a balmy night in late autumn when Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane strolled toward Margot's home. And here you are, Miss Lane, safe and sound at the entrance to your apartment building. You're very gallant, Mr. Cranston. Oh, even at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> tired, Margot? Yes, deliciously tired. Enjoy the evening? Oh, Lamont, it was perfect. Everything was scrumptious from beginning to end. The dinner, the theater, the dancing, even the walk through the park just now. And why shouldn't it be something special? After all, you don't have a birthday every day. <laughs> For which I am profoundly grateful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, good night, Lamont, and thanks again so much. Good night, Margo. I'll see hey, you Hey, buddy, got a match? Why, yes, I think so. Never mind, get your dukes up. Lamont, he's, he's got a gun. Say, what is this? It's a stick-up, buddy. Come on, get your hands up before I let you have it. Okay, lady, I begin with you. Hand over that purse. Come on, give me that purse, no stolen. Better do as he says, Margo. All right. All right. Your turn, buddy. Give me your wallet. Make it snappy. Not tonight, rabbit. What? Wait a minute, wise guy. How come you know my name? The car that just went by, rabbit. Lit up your face for a moment with his headlights. Hey, keep your hands up. Keep them up, I tell you. I'll drill you. You're afraid to pull that trigger, rabbit. You haven't got the nerve. You stay away from me, buddy. You take another step and I'll shoot. Put down that gun, Rabbit. Come on, get back. Get back, I'll blast you wide open. Then why don't you, Rabbit? Go ahead. Go ahead and shoot. You can't miss me now. Oh, Lamont, no, you'll kill you. You haven't got the nerve to kill me, have you, Rabbit? You're afraid to pull that trigger. No. No, I ain't afraid. I ain't, I tell you. Then what are you waiting for? I... I... Oh. Well, my friend, you're certainly too late now. Oh, Lamont. Well, there's nothing to worry about, Margot. Except a few skin knuckles. Say, that wasn't a bad uppercut, if I do say so myself. Yes, but but you almost committed suicide. Walking straight into a hold-up man with a gun. Oh, Lamont. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't shoot. You knew? How? But how did you know? Margot, that gentleman sleeping blissfully on the sidewalk is Rabbit Eddie Burke. Hanger on of Tony Morello's, the gangster. You see, Margot, Rabbit here is frustrated. A psychological case. What on earth do you mean? Well, he always wanted to be a professional gunman, but he could never summon enough nerve to pull the trigger. He's never been able to reach that pitch of frenzy to take that last 
fatal step to kill. The whole underworld holds him in contempt as a cheap crook who carries a gun just for show. So that's where he got his nickname, Rabbit. Exactly. Whew, but still, Lamont, you took an awful chance. After all, there's always a first time, even for Rabbit Eddie Burke. <laughs> if there is, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> oh, Margo, you go in and phone for the police. I'll stay here and keep an eye on our friend. A whole year since that hold-up went wrong, Tony. A whole year I spent in a clink because of that rat Lamont Cranston. Sure, sure, Rabbit. I don't know how you feel. After all, when a guy takes your gun away, that uh, makes you look like a chump, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he made me look like a chump, all right. But someday, Tony, I'm going to get him. I'm going to watch him squirm, hear him beg for mercy. I'll blast the life out of him if it's the last thing I do. Sure you will, Rabbit. But take it easy, pal. There's plenty of time. You just got out of stir and you got yourself to worry about. Well, what do you mean, Tony? I did my time, didn't I? Sure, sure you did. But the pen didn't do your health no good. You look kind of all in. Hey, uh, Robert, you ain't sick, are you? Well, me? I know. Why, Tony? Why do you ask? Well, I was kind of worried about you. Your face ain't got no color. You're breathing hard all the time. Oh, I, I feel all right. Well, you never can tell until the doc gives you going over with the x-rays. Yeah. Say, Tony, maybe you're right. Uh, maybe I ought to see a doctor. Yeah, check up wouldn't do you no harm. Tell you what I do, Rabbit. Yeah? Take you to my own doctor, Doc Bryan. He'll give you the once-over and he won't charge you a dime for it. Oh, say, that's why to you, Tony. Oh, not at all, Rabbit. After all, you're one of my boys, ain't you? If there's one thing Tony Morello does, that's take care of his boys. Tony, I got the jitters. I wonder what's keeping the doc so long. Right, there he is now. Well, Mr. Burke, I've completed my examination. Yeah? Yeah, Doc, what'd you find? Mr. Burke, I'm sorry, but I've got some bad news for you. Bad? Some very bad news. Bad news? Well, you mean I, I got something wrong in my chest? It isn't your chest I'm worried about. It's your heart. My, my heart? Yes. The x-ray shows that you have a very bad heart condition, a severe aneurysm. Oh, look, Doc, this aneurysm, uh, what's it mean? I'll oh, give it to me straight. It means, Mr. Burke, that you have a serious weakness of the heart wall. To be brutally frank, you haven't more than six months to live. <laughs> He gave me six months, Tony. Six months to live. Well, gee, someday I'll be walking along the street and then... And then it'll come. Yeah, I know how you feel, Rabbit. That's tough. Yeah. Like standing around in a death house. Knowing just when you're going to burn and waiting for the hot seat. Ah, now, take it easy, pal. I know you're going through plenty, but... Uh, maybe it wouldn't happen like the doc said. Not a chance. You hurt him yourself, Tony. There ain't a thing I can do but wait for it. Just sit around and wait to grow. Here, here, Robert. Have a drink. It'll take the edge off. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I need. Okay. Hey, Robert, I was just thinking. Yeah? You know what I'd do if I knew I only had six months to live? No. What would you do? I'd spend all my time painting the town red. Wine, dames, music. I'd have them all. Plenty. Yes, sir, I'd do all the things I ever wanted to do, but... Didn't have the nerve to do before. I'd live a lifetime in those six months. Yeah. Yeah, you got something there, Tony. Uh, take your case, for instance, Rabbit. You always wanted to be a first-class trigger man, didn't you? Yeah, but I never had the nerve. Oh, well, that's different now, Rabbit. Hmm? I don't get you. Listen, pal. This is your chance to be a real killer. Hottest gunman in town, a big shot. Who? Me? Yeah, you. You don't have to be afraid of nothing now, Rabbit. And go around blasting guys with a gun like you were shooting pigeons. How does that sound, pal? Oh, it sounds swell. But, no, nah, Tony, I ain't got what it takes. Why, if the cop nailed me, it didn't mean a chair. Well, what do you care? You don't have to be afraid of the seat. You got nothing to lose anyway, have you? 
Your pump is bad, ain't it? You only got six months anyway. Eat away. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. My rabbit, you can be terrific. Now, listen. I'll make you my number one trigger man, give you a grand a week to play with. A thousand bucks a week? Sure, sure, and you can live like a king rabbit while you last. And you can enjoy yourself knocking over guys you and me don't like. And uh, that ain't all. What else is there? Lamont Cranston. This is your chance to get him the way you want it to. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to worry about the chair now. I can blast his brains out. Oh, Lamont Cranston. Hey, Rabbit. Rabbit, look through the window. Down there on the sidewalk. You know who that is coming along? Yes, yeah, Donovan, the cop. That's right. Donovan, the cop. The flatfoot who sent you up for your first stretch at the pen. The bull who kicks you off the street every time he sees you. Yeah. Now's your chance to know how it feels to put a slug through a guy. Here. There's my gun, Rabbit. Huh? Now, let's see. You knock that flat foot off. Here, here. I open the window for you. Tony, I... That's the first one. It comes the hardest, Rabbit. The rest are easy. Now, look at him, pal. Right in the spot for you to draw a perfect beat. Go on, go on. Let him have it, Rabbit. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. Blast him. Okay. I ain't scared. Here goes. You did it, Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. You're in. You put a slug right through that flat foot's heart. He's dead. He's dead. I killed him. I did it. I did it. <laughs> We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. But here is important information. Blue coal dealers everywhere are delivering fuel as fast as wartime transportation facilities will permit. Yes, we want to make sure that everyone has enough coal on hand for immediate requirements. To help speed deliveries, blue coal dealers have asked consumers to cooperate by following two important suggestions. First, advise your dealer now of the estimated quantity of fuel you will require for the entire heating season. This will enable him to work out a schedule of deliveries that will ensure a steady supply all winter long. There is no advantage in placing duplicate orders with more than one dealer. It only makes distribution more difficult. Next, when your dealer has arranged to deliver your coal, be sure that someone is at home or preparations have been made to receive it. Loads that have to return to the dealer's yard complicate distribution and cause needless waste of gasoline and rubber. Remember, your blue coal dealer has to plan the routing of deliveries several days in advance. Help him to maintain a smooth working schedule. Be prepared to receive your coal when it arrives by having the cellar window unlocked and the bin boards in place. This will save valuable time. And now, back to the shadow. Listen, Morello. I want to know who's responsible for all these killings. How should I know, Commissioner? Looks like your work. Four men have been shot and killed. And every one of them was a mortal enemy of yours. Ain't that too bad? That's kind of a coincidence, ain't it? Coincidence, my eye. There's a crazy gunman loose in this town, and I've got good reason to believe it's you. You ain't got a thing on me, Weston, and you know it. That plain clothes fly cop you put on my trail, that Lanigan, he knows it as well as you do. Had a perfect alibi every time, checked and double-checked. That's just it, Morello. Your alibis have been too perfect. If I was you, Cranston, I'd keep my nose out of this. But you're not me, and I like my nose just where it is. Okay, okay, but don't say I didn't tip you off. Commissioner Weston speaking. Yes, what is it? What? Detective Lanigan. Where? All right, stand by. We'll notify every squad car in the area right away. What's up, Weston? Tom Lanigan. Just shot, killed from a passing car. Oh, and I ain't that too bad, Commissioner. <laughs> Maybe you try to tell me I shot Lanigan while you wasn't looking from your office window here. <laughs> well... This is one alibi I wouldn't have to prove. Well, 
Where to, Mr. Cranston? Where to? Yeah, we'll drop Miss Lane into her apartment, Shrevey. Okay. This is right down to Rabbit Eddie Burke. Oh, that Rabbit Eddie, Mr. Cranston. Boy, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. I wouldn't want to. Not from what I heard. Well, what did you hear, Shrevey? Well, it seems my bosom friend and companion, Big Charlie, over-listened to a couple of hoods he was hacking around. They was talking about Rabbit Eddie Burke, they was talking. Yes? Yeah. Anyway, it seems Big Charlie gathered from the conservation in the back seat that Rabbit Eddie is stuck with a bum ticker he is stuck. The doc give him the once over, and he tells him that he ain't got but six months before he croaks he ain't got. Shrevy, are you sure? Oh, yeah, Mr. Cranston, positive. You know what I'd do if I had six months to live? You know what I'd do? No, Shrevy, what would you do? Oh, well, Miss Lane, I'd park this hack of mine in front of every hydrant in town. I'd park it. <laughs> and I'd spend all day balling out traffic cops. I'd ball. <laughs> and I'd go up one way streets the wrong way. I'd go. <laughs> in other words, you'd do all the things that you've been afraid to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shrevy. Yeah, Mr. Preston? Did Big Charlie happen to hear the name of the doctor who examined Rabbit Eddie? Oh, uh, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, uh, Dr. Bryan up on the south side. He handles a lot of hoods he handles. Thanks, Shrevey. You drop Miss Lane at her apartment. I'll get off here. Yes, sir. There's somebody I've got to see. Alone, Margot. Listen, Tony, this ticker of mine may go at any second. My six months are almost up. So what, Rabbit? So I'm going out and give it to Lamont Cranston before it's too late. Now, listen. Cranston can wait. I've got a couple of more important rights for you to bump off first. Next, Tony. I ain't taking no chances. I'm going to kill Cranston now. Oh, I can't wait to put a slug in that weasel's heart. It's eating me alive. You listen, Rabbit. You do as I say. I'm giving the orders. Maybe, but I ain't taking them anymore. Oh, you little... Stop that gat, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> You're a little late, Tony. Just a little too late. You showed me how to use a gun, now I showed you. There's only one more thing I want before I hand in my chips. To get Lamont Cranston. All right, nurse. You can go home now. Thank you, Dr. Bryan. Uh, let's see... I'm going to reserve a table at the club. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I must be imagining things. I thought I heard a laugh. You did, Dr. Bryan. What? You heard the laugh of the shadow. The, the shadow? Yes. But, but where are you? I can't see you. No man can see me, Dr. Bryan. It's useless to look around the room. Why? Why are you here? What do you want, Shadow? I want to know the true condition of a certain criminal's heart. Who? Who do you mean? I mean Rabbit Eddie Burke. Rabbit Eddie? Well, I... I don't know. Why do you ask me? Don't try to lie to me, my friend. You examined him. Told him he had a very bad heart. All right. I'll admit it, Shadow. I did examine him. His heart was critically weak. Strange, Dr. Bryant. Very strange. You examined Burke the day after he got out of prison, did you not? Why, why, yes. What about it? Just this, my friend. The day before he was released, he was examined by the prison doctor, a very competent physician. And Burke's heart was found to be in fine condition. Well, I, I... I want the truth, Dr. Bryant. Why did you render a false diagnosis? You can't intimidate me. I don't have to answer that. You'll have to answer before a court of justice as an accessory to murder. But Murder? Yes. And it will not go easier with you, my friend, when they find that you have no legal right to practice medicine. You... you know that? Yes, Dr. Bryan. I investigated you. For years, you've been masquerading as a licensed physician, dealing in crime behind a veil of respectability. Well, my friend, are you going to tell me what I want to know now? All right. All right, Shadow, I'll tell you. But it was Tony Morello who made me do it. He wanted Burke to be his personal gunman, to do his killings. He knew he could talk Burke into it, under the circumstances. Oh, it was a cold-blooded frame-up, eh? And a perfect setup for Morello. He could sit back with an airtight alibi in each case while Rabbit Eddie did the dirty work and took all the chances. Yes, yes, that was it. Why did you help Morello, Dr. Bryan? I had to. Morello threatened to kill me if I didn't. The law will judge you and pass sentence, Dr. Bryan. 
Meanwhile, I warn you not to leave town. Remember, the shadow is watching you. <laughs> Hello, Shrevey. Did you bring Margot with you? Uh, no, Mr. Cranston. She was not in when I called for her. She was not. Well, that's funny. We had a date this afternoon. She should have been home long before this. Oh, excuse me. Certainly. Hello? Hi, Cranston. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, noise in the background, I can't quite hear you. Is this Lamont Cranston talking? Yes. Uh, that dame of yours, Margot Lane. He ain't gonna show up this afternoon or any other afternoon. What do you mean? I mean I nabbed her. In just one hour from now, I'm going to kill her, Cranston. And you won't be able to do a thing about it because you don't know where she is. Who is this? A friend, Cranston. Just a friend. How do you feel, pal? How's it feel to sit around and squirm and eat your heart out because you can't help your dame, eh? Uh, you're gonna suffer and suffer plenty. If you hurt that girl, I'll hunt you down and kill you with my bare hands. You got it the other way around, Cranston. Because after I get through with her, pal, I'm gonna hunt you down. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Water department. Uh, my name is Lamont Cranston. I'd like to talk to Commissioner Murphy, please. Just a minute, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Cranston. What can I do for you? Commissioner, I need some information, and I need it fast. Just one second more, Miss Lane. That's all you got. One second more. Well, where's your boyfriend now, eh? Where's Cranston? Oh, I can see him now, tearing his hair, watching a time run out. You'll get the chair for this. Ah, what do I care about the chair? There's only one law I believe in. The law of this gun. <laughs> well, time's up, sweetheart. I wonder what Cranston's thinking about now, eh? Boy, I'd give my right arm to see him now. To see his face. He'll never rest until he finds you. Ah, it's me that'll find him, sister. Well, here goes. Now just sit tight and shut your eyes. No. It's going to be quick and easy. No. You just hear a noise, sister, that's all. Just a noise. <laughs> My compliments on your courage, Rabbit. What's that? It takes a brave man to shoot a helpless woman. Who's talking? Where are you? The voice you hear is the voice of the shadow, Rabbit. I'm standing by your side. The shadow. I heard of you. You're the guy nobody can see. Precisely, Rabbit. And wherever I go, I bring justice. Not the law of the gun. The law of the people. Oh, why are you here, Shadow? I have come as an avenger of society, Rabbit. You shall pay for your crimes. In the chair. Ah, you're wasting your time, pal. I got a weak heart. It's due to go any time now. I'm going to cheat the chair. No, Rabbit. Your heart is in excellent condition. Huh? What are you talking about? Morello framed you, Rabbit. He forced Dr. Bryant to tell you that you were doomed. Morello knew that he could get you to kill to do his murders while he sat back and played safe. No, you're, you're lying, Shadow. The Shadow never lies, my friend. Dr. Bryant has just confessed. The police have just picked him up. They'll be here for you at any moment. Oh, no. They'll never take me to the death house. And neither will you. That's the end of you, Shadow. <laughs> You're mistaken, Rabbit. Huh? Your gun has failed you. You <laughs> can't escape your punishment. Oh, that's where you're wrong. There's still another way out. And this time I won't miss. Rabbit! <coughs> Too late, Shadow. I'm going to cheat the hot seat after all. It's funny. They told me I wouldn't live more than six months. They meant to lie to me. But instead, they gave it to me straight. It's just six months today that I 
walked out of Doc Brain's office. <laughs> Too bad, Rabbit. You weren't really meant to be a killer. Who knows? Under different circumstances, you might have been a decent, honest citizen. But the law makes no distinction among criminals. It punishes them all, impartially. Oh, Lamont, you have no idea what runs through your mind when you're waiting for the shock of a bullet. There I was with my eyes closed and saying every prayer I ever knew when the shadow came along. <laughs> Something to remember, eh? Whew, as long as I live. You know, when I heard your voice, I could have kissed you. Well, why didn't you, Margo? Oh, for the very good reason that I couldn't see you. <laughs> Say, Lamont. Yeah? How on earth did you know I was there at Morello's hideout? Well, I got in touch with Commissioner Murphy over at the water department. He told me. Commissioner Murphy? Uh-huh. But what's he got to do with all of this? How did he know? Remember when Rabbit phoned me? Yes. Well, while Rabbit was talking to me over the phone, I heard what sounded like a big water pump through the phone receiver. Well, but I still don't understand. <laughs> it's very simple, Margot. I called Commissioner Murphy at the water department and asked him whether he had a crew out somewhere in the city using one of those big emergency water pumps. And luck was with me. A water main had burst at Central and Sixth, and they were pumping the water. I knew Morello had a hideout in the apartment building across the street, so I called Weston, and, well, the rest you know. Now, there are thousands of young men who have attended the John Barclay Sales Service training schools and they have helped many of you to solve difficult heating problems. In addition, they have shown countless blue coal customers the way to healthful and economical home heating. Today, very few of these men are available. Most of them are in key positions with our government. Naturally, it's not easy now for your blue coal dealer to handle requests for firing instructions and like services. So if you feel the need for information on how to operate your furnace, don't insist that a serviceman be sent to your home. Ask your blue coal dealer for our new illustrated firing chart. This easy-to-understand firing chart shows the proper method of firing anthracite and explains the correct operation of dampers. It contains all of the information needed for the easy and economical operation of your furnace. These charts are free, and your dealer will be glad to furnish you with a copy. I thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the Shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This story produced by the BM&W Coal Company distributors of blue coal. This is Mutual.